I'm Steve, we're back with another math challenge. This time it is the 2021 math challenge, the one that was sat earlier this week by students. A few of you have asked me to upload it. So I'm doing it at the earliest opportunity I can uh, in a way that won't kind of leak to students still being able to do it. This is the first day I can actually do it and broadcast it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I haven't got any answers. So the way I'm going to do the answers this time is that I'm going to do it as normal. Um, and then I'm going to check my answers with uh, a friend of mine who's done it too. And if we disagree, I'm going to check it with a second friend of mine who is a math teacher who also has done it. So if all of us agree, I'm going to assume we're right. If I agree with one other, I'm going to assume that's the right answer. So that just be a, a slight caveat here um, that we might not actually mark this as accurately as we would normally do. So normally I have the... Um, Normally I would have the uh, actual, actual answers with the actual, actual solutions. So if we get to one we can't do or we, we get wrong, I might not be able to uh, show you the best way of doing it. But we're going to give it a go, um, mainly because a lot of you have asked when am I going to do this one. So I'm going to do it as quick as I can. Uh, as normal, if you're doing this at a late date and you're watching this on YouTube or something, um, these are challenging questions. They're going to make you think. They're not going to be like anything you see in a normal... GCC exam or anything like that. They're aimed for the top students in school, uh, usually year 10 and 11, or year 9s can do it too. Um, and uh, the questions get pretty hard. So what you should be doing if you're planning to do this yourself is you should focus on the first 15 because if you get any of the first 15 wrong, you don't lose any marks. So focus on the first 15. Thereafter, if you get to one you don't think you can attempt, just skip it, go to the next one. And you shouldn't be guessing after question 15, because you'll notice if you look at point 0.6 there, the scoring rules, you get five marks for everything you get right for the first 15, six marks for the ones after that. But if you get the last 10 wrong, you're going to lose marks. So uh, you shouldn't be guessing unless you narrow it down to a guaranteed 50-50, and then maybe it's mathematically worth guessing, but you generally don't want to be doing that. Um, but we're just going to have fun. We're doing this because we like maths. Um, so we're going to have a bit of fun, and I think AJ is watching along with me, who's one of the, get one of the two people who's given me some answers, although I haven't looked at them yet, I haven't seen any of the questions yet, so we're going to give it our best shot, and I'll also warn you now, I'm still quite ill, I might not sound it, but I've been in bed for about three days now, so I will do the best I can do, and uh, apologies if I make any mistakes, so off we crack. Alright, here we go. What is the value of 2021 minus 2223 plus 2425? So, um, thanks AJ. So I'm just going to add the two together first. So 2021 add 2425 to avoid getting any negatives. 6444. Four, four. And then I'm going to take away 2223, two, which actually makes it very easy. It gets me 2223. Two, two, The day, oh, I'm already going to hate this one. The day before, the day before yesterday was two days after the day before my birthday. Today is Thursday. What day is my birthday? Oh my god. So today is Thursday. The day before, the day before yesterday. So that's yesterday. That's the day before yesterday. That's the day before the day before yesterday. It was two days after the day before my birthday. So that's the day before my birthday. So that's my birthday. That's two days after the day before my birthday. So I think that's right. And what day was my birthday? Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, I think. What is the value of two subtract in brackets, negative two subtract two? I mean, yeah, you get the idea. I'm not going to read all that out, but you get the idea. So we've got 2 subtract. This would be negative 4. Subtract. Subtract again and another negative 4. Uh, 2 subtract negative 4 is 6. Subtract negative 2 subtract negative 4 is 2. And 6 subtract 2 is 4.
The diagram shows three squares, PQRS, TUVW and WXYZ. Angles PUV and QYX are 62 and 74 respectively. What is the val ang what is the angle at VXW? So um, I'm going to try and explain why I think I've got the answer. So basically, if you imagine a triangle here and a triangle here, they're sort of congruent because this is 90 and this is whatever makes 90 from 62, then that will also be 62, which means that one and that one will be the same. And to the same extent, that one and that one will be the same. So 62, 90 and this one gets, well, gets that one. And then whatever, whatever certainly you need to add to 74 to get to 90 makes this one, which is the same as that one. So we're just going uh, to say, to get from 62 to 90, you need to add 28. To get from 74 to 90, you need to add 16. And 28 add 16 is 44. I might just try and explain that a bit better. So you've got uh, I think these are congruent because of the way the square works. So this will be 28, this will be 90 and this will be 62 which means that will be 28 by the same sort of reasons. I believe that works. So we got 44. Nice, much cleaner than my method. I did area inside a heptagon, angles inside a heptagon. Which heptagon? Oh, this bottom shape here. Ugh, that's awful. <laughs> so yeah, that is another way of doing it. This bottom shape here is a heptagon. So if you know what a heptagon adds up to, which off the top of my head, I don't, I could work it out, but basically that's 270, that's 270, that's 90, that's 90, you've got 74 and 62, and then you just need to work out what that is. Yeah. Uh, which is a fine way of doing it. Again, I'm just looking for the quickest way. If I can see a quick way, I'm going to use the quickest way. So that's why these questions, that's why I really like these questions, because Nearly every one of them has, not every, not everyone, nearly everyone has an elegant solution. <coughs> and if you can spot more and more elegant solutions, you save time. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. It's 1,080, isn't it, a heptagon? Is it 1,080? It's close to that. In April, April, May, April, May and June have 90 suites between them. Oh, these are people. No. May has three quarters of the number of suites that June has. April's two thirds of the number of suites that May has. How many suites does June have? So let's say that June has X. So June has X. May has three quarters of X. And April has two thirds of three quarters of X. And these three have to add up to 90. And you could you could label any of them X, but there's a couple of reasons that June was the one you're basing the first one off, and June's the one we want to find out. But you could have called April X or May X or A or B or N or whatever. So we've got X plus three quarters of I'm gonna to have to move this up a bit because my head's annoying. X plus three quarters of X plus 
so two thirds of three quarters is a half of x equals 90. So in total you've got um, two and a quarter x is 90 or nine quarters of x. 90, which means x is 40. Uh, you would normally multiply by 4, divide by 9, but it's much quicker to divide by 9 than multiply by 4 in this case, because it keeps the number smaller. Chi has begun to list in ascending order the positive integers, which are not factors of 240. What is the sixth number? On Kai's list. 240 has got a lot of factors. But in sending other positive integers that are not factors of 90, we might just have to list these here. So, um, I know 1 goes in 240. I'm just going to list them in pairs just so you can see that I'm right. 120. 3 goes in 80 times. 4 goes in 60 times. 5 goes in, uh, oops. 5 goes in uh, 48 times, 6 goes in 40 times, 7 is the first one, so 7 doesn't go into 240, 8 goes in 30 times, 9 doesn't, 10 goes in uh, 24 times, 11 doesn't, running out of space, 12 goes in 20 times, 13 doesn't, because 7 doesn't, 14 doesn't, 15 18 I think, 15 18s, 6, is it 15 18s? Where's 15 the answer? Now this is a, this is divisible by three and five, so it's divisible by fifteen. Fifteen eighteens. Sixteen doesn't. Hmm. No, sixteen in the six. It's fifteen sixteens, isn't it? There we go. That makes sense. Fifteen sixteens. It's a good thing I checked. So my answer is seventeen. Because 16 sixteens is 256. 16 squared is 256. So take one sixteen off, you get 240. So 17. And AJ said that it can't be 18 because 9 doesn't. For the similar reason, I said it couldn't be 14. Uh, so it couldn't be 14 because 7 doesn't. It can't be 18 because 9 doesn't. There's a little tip for you. If, if obviously, if you're trying to divide something by... 12, but it doesn't divide by 4 or 3, it doesn't work. What is the value of 4 subtract a quarter divided by 2 subtract a half? Well, 4 subtract a quarter is going to be 3 and 3 quarters, which is 15 quarters. I'm going to change them into improper fractions. So 4 is 16 quarters, take off a quarter. I'm going to divide that by 2 subtract a half, which is 3 halves. And when you're dividing, you... Uh, you invert the second fraction, you do the reciprocal of 3 halves. So we go so 15 over 4 times 2 thirds, which gets us 5 over 2, is it? 15 divided by 3 is 5, 2 divided by 4 is 2. Well, 2 over 4 is a half. So I think it's two and a half. The diagram shows two 10 by 14 rectangles which are edge to edge that share a common vertex. It's also shown that the center O of one rectangle and the midpoint M on the other. What is the distance O to M? So I'm going to make this bigger because I, I might need to write on this. If I was focused, I would have made all the diagrams bigger at the start, but like... <coughs> I uh, 
not with it today. So we've got a, a larger diagram there to potentially fiddle with. And I'm just going to try and find out that length there. So if m is the midpoint, I wonder if we can just do Pythagoras. So how wide is this? This is going to be the rectangles are the same size. So this bit is 7 and this bit is 5. So that's 12. And this is going to be 14 take off half the width, which is 5. So it's going to be 9. And this is a 9, 12, 15 Pythagoras triangle. So the Pythagorean triples, there's a few of them, but the most common one is the 3, 4, 5. Then any multiple of that will get you a Pythagoras triple. So if you multiply the original Pythagoras triple by 3, you get a 9, 12, 15 one. The other one you should probably know for Pythagoras triples, in case it comes up, is 5, 12, 13. It's less common because the multiples of that aren't that nice. But again, if you spot a 5, 12, 13, you know that a 10, 24, 25 would work as well. How many of the following statements are true? A prime multiplied by a prime is always a prime. A square multiplied by a square is always a square. An odd number multiplied by an odd number is always an odd number. And an even number multiplied by an even number is always an even number. Hi Tim, UKMT sits almost certainly a 3, 4, 5 triangle and 15 is the only multiple 5. Yeah, it might not have been Pythagoras, so it could have been another way of doing it. But once he spots that. There are some others as well. There's, there's the, the set of triples. Um, you've got uh, 8, 15 and 17. That's a weird set. And then you've got 12, 35 and 37. And these will start off their own sets, and you can generate sets like this because this comes from the four, three, five set. You can notice that if you <coughs> these are one apart from a multiple of four, these are one apart from a multiple of four, these are one apart from a multiple of four. Um, either side of it. So if you have the multiple of four first, you can generate more sets of them. Yeah. So how many, they're not linked anyway, so we're just going to work out. So it's a bit like, it's a bit to, 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 to say something is always true means you to, to find it false, you just need one instance. So for example, gravity is always true. And one of the reasons is no one's ever found it not working. No one's walked past like a tree and found an apple floating in the air or anything like that. So, um, we just need to find an example for each one. And a prime multiplied by a prime is always a prime. Uh, well, that's not true because 2 times 3 is 6. In fact, that, <laughs> that's, almost, that's almost always a prime multiplied by a prime is not a prime, usually. Um, that's, uh, a square multiplied by a square is always a square. I think that's true. If you think about a square number, so let's say you've got n squared times m squared, you can write that as n times m squared. So 1 times 9 is 9, uh, 4 times 9 is 36. I think that's always true. Because if you have a square number times a square number, you can think of this is n times n and this is m times n. So you've got n times m twice. An odd number multiplied by an odd number is always an odd number. I believe that's true. And an even number multiplied by an even number is always an even number. I believe that's true as well. Anything multiplied by an even number is even. So an even by an even is always true. An odd times an odd is always true. I believe it is. That was easier than it looks, that question. The prime factor decomposition of 2021 is 43 times 47. 
What is the value of 53 times 57? So I'm aware that I could just multiply them together. But I wonder why they've given you this bit. There must be a nicer way of doing this. I can't see it, so I'm just going to multiply them together. So 53 times 57. 7 threes are 21, carry 2, 7 fives, 35, 5 threes, 15, carry 1, 2, 6, 2, 3, 0, 2, 1. I'm sure there is a reason you can use that, but my multiplication is fast enough that I, I can probably just do it the normal way. But yeah, I don't, there'll be a reason they've given you this, there'll be a trick. The line with the equation y equals 2x plus 3 is reflected in the x-axis. Which of the following is the equation of the new line? Well, um, I know there's an algebraic way of doing it. I'm just going to sketch it, though. Uh, it gives me an indication of what I'm doing. y equals 2x plus 3, so we're looking something like that. And then it's reflected in the x-axis, so we're looking for that line, which will hit at negative 3. So already I know that it can't be that one. It can't be, I would have, um, yeah, it can't be that one. That won't hit a negative 3. Can't be that one. So it's got to be one of these two because they will hit a negative three, and that one has a positive gradient, so it can't be that one. So I think it's E. Yeah, you can just multiply it by. Uh, if you multiply the right hand side by negative one, you just you reflect it in the x-axis. Okay, so AJ said that you can do on this last one. You can do. Um, 43 plus 10, 47 plus 10, and then you expand this out, you know, 43, 47 is that, and then you've got 10 lots of this and 10 lots of this, well, because 43 and 47 get you 900, and then 10 times 10 gets you the other 100, that gets you 1,000, so this is why it's 1,000 bigger. Yeah, so that only works because 43 plus 47 is 90, I think. That little trick. But yeah, I just, I mean, I, I could, the time it took me to spot that means I could have just multiplied them together. So I don't know why they're asking me to do that. Andrew, what a silly name, Andrew, eh? Calculates that 40% of 50% of X is equal to 20% of 30% of Y, where X is not zero. Which of the following is true? So we know that 40% of 50% is 0 0.2 equals 20% of 30% of y. So uh, that's 0 0.06. 30% of y is 0 0.3 and then a fifth of 0 0.3 is 0 0.06. So we can say, now these are all fractions, which of the following is true? I'm going to multiply them by 100. So you get 20x is 6y. And then I'm just going to simplify them as much as I can. So 20x is 6y's. And then... You can have 10x is, is 3y's, looking at that last one. And then if you divide by 3, you get 10 thirds of x is y, which is that last one. 
So now I prefer writing in blue, but I'm going to switch back to blue. What is the remainder when 12,345 multiplied by 54,321 is divided by 9? So this is one where I'm not going to try and multiply them out. So I think it's going to be 0 because this is a multiple of 3. It's not a multiple of 9, but it's a multiple of 3 because 3, 6, 15, 3, 6, 15. They're both multiples of 3. So if this is a multiple of 3 and this is a multiple of 3, the product will be a multiple of 9 because we've each got a single factor of 3. And if the product's a multiple of 9, then 9 will go into it. Exactly. You got 13 wrong. Is this the one you got wrong? Yeah, it's one of my, like, it's my favourite bit of maths, number theory. Uh, the diagram shows a large square divided into squares of three different sizes. What percentage of the large, large square is shaded? Well, if we say that this length is 10 and this length is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100, that's 100%. And then in theory, we can try and work out the area of the small square. So these ones each have a length of 2. And you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you've got 8 lots of 2 squared is 32. So that ring of squares around the edge is 32%. This is 6, so this is 3. So these two, you've got 2 lots of 3 squares. It's 18. So the two big squares are 18%. And if this is 3, this is, in fact, these two fill up that gap. So you've got another 9 as well. So you've got one more lot of 3 squared. 32 at 18 is 50, 59, which is one of the answers we've got. I believe that's right. Um, I don't know what to do. If they, I mean, it feels like just making them both 10s is the easiest way of doing it. Because then you've got your 100%. I think that's fine. And obviously 10 divides nicely by 5 and so on. Right, well, on the last question that you can guess, if you're doing this yourself, this should be the last one you have a random guess at. After that, you should probably have a good idea what you think the answer is. Uh, so Patrick drives from P to Q an average speed of 40 miles an hour. His drive back from Q to P is an average speed of 40 miles and takes two minutes less. How far is it in miles from P to Q? So, the, we're trying to, trying to find the distance. So we can say that the time it takes to get there the first time uh, is distance over speed. So it's distance over speed. And then the time minus 2 is distance over speed. And then if we substitute this in for this, you can say, I'm just going to say that the time is the same in both cases because this is just two minutes less. The time in, oh hang on, takes two minutes less. So this, weirdly, has to be in two minutes less is a thirtieth of an hour. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, 
So that doesn't work. But but same sort of thing. So basically, because everything's now in miles and hours, or nothing's in miles, but the distance will be in miles, and everything else is in hours, we can substitute what we know for the time here into this equation. So we're going to substitute what we know the time is here. You can have d over 40 minus a 30th is d over 45. And we're going to try and solve this. This does not feel like an easy one to do. Um, we can multiply through by 5 to make things nicer. Uh, so d over 8 minus a sixth is d over 9. My d's are awful, apologies. And then d over 8 minus d over 9 equals a sixth. Oh, there's probably an easy way of doing this. The difference between an eighth and a ninth is a seventy-tooth, I think. So you're going to get. I'm just, I'm just making sure. So you've got nine d over seventy-two minus eight d over seventy-two is a sixth. So you've got d over seventy-two is a sixth d. Is going to be a sixth times 72 or a sixth of 72, which is 12. And it is 12 miles because D is in miles. I made them both D equals and put them equal to each other. Yeah, that's probably a better way of doing it. But because I was trying to find out D, I thought I'd do it this way. Uh, Tim's done it a different way. Tim. Uh, Tim probably just did distance equals speed times. Uh, speed times time and, and, and did it that way, but yeah. We've got 12 anyway. That was not, uh, the numbers were not nice, so it was probably a, a more elegant way or a better way of doing it. Felt easy to work out time for me, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's just my habit of looking what the question's wanting, because sometimes in the questions in these, um, you don't know the distance or the time, but it's asking you to work out the distance. So sometimes the time's an awkward number, but it will cancel out. So in this particular case, I understand that it hasn't worked out. In this particular case, I thought it might just be um, fine. And the fact that I had to change that to a 30th as well is a bit fiddly. Right, well, on to the last 10 questions now. Uh, so we're going to give this a go. Yeah, that is a lot easier. Yeah, d equals 40t and d equals 45, lots of t minus 2. But you still need to change 2 into 1 30th, don't you? Uh, the 2 into 1 30th. The semicircle is drawn on each side of a square as shown. The square has a length of side 2 pi. What is the area of the resulting shape? Okay, well this is um, the area of the square is going to be 2 pi squared, which is going to be 4 pi squared. The semicircles, you've got two full circles with a radius of pi. So you've got two, these, these are the circles, you've got two lots of pi times r squared, uh, which is going to be two pi cubed. So the area of the whole shape is going to be this plus this together. So you've got four pi squared plus 2 pi cubed and that's going to have you can take a factor of it looks like the factorizer you can take a factor of 2 pi squared out so 2 pi squared lots of 2 plus pi which is this bottom one here Ooh. 
In the rectangle PQRS, the side PQ is of length 2 and the side QR is of length 4. Points T and U lie inside the rectangle, so P, Q, T and R, S, U are equilateral triangles. What's the area of the quadrilateral? Alright, so I'm going to have to draw this out. So, we have the way they label shapes, when they say that the shape is PQRS, it means they start at point P and go clockwise on the shape. So it will never be PQ, it will always be PQRS. Um, so PQ is PQ is 2. I'm going to make it look a bit better. So P, Q, R, S, because P, Q is 2 and Q, R is 4. And points T and U lie inside the rectangle. So P, Q, T is an equilateral triangle. So P, Q, T. And R S U R S U are equilateral triangles. Now the height of a, an equilateral triangle with a base of two, the height is less than two, so these aren't going to overlap. So uh, P that's T and that's U. Uh, what is the area of the quadrilateral QR UT? So if we if we have a dotted line there, we're trying to find the area of this top bit here, which is they've made this more complicated than it is, I think, because it's going to be it's going to be half of the rectangle. Subtract this, subtract this, but this is is. So basically, to work out the area of this shape here, just this quadrilateral, it's going to be 1 times 4, subtract this and this. Well, these two together are the same as the area of one triangle. Subtract one of the triangles. Subtract one of the triangles. So we've got 1 times 4 is 4, and subtract the area of a triangle is half AB sine C. And it'll be sine 60, because this is an equilateral triangle, so this is 60. So we're going to so four subtract a half. A and B are two. So four subtract a half of two times two is two. So it's going to be two sine 60. Sine 60 is root three over two. Uh, so two lots of root three over two is root three. So it's four subtract root three, which is that one there. So, th so that one, I think part of the hard part of that is just drawing it out. I mean, it's not hard. It's just it doesn't. A lot of the time, it doesn't feel like you need to draw things that, are that complicated out on these. But hmm. which of these is closest in size to a one? Well, this one is closer than this one, so we can get rid of that. And this one is closer than this one, so we can get rid of that. Uh, this one is closer than this one, so we can get rid of that. Have I done something wrong? Because are they not the same? Are they not the same distance away? <sighs> hmm. 
Hmm. So I've just had a nice hint, which I really like, so I'm going to use it. If we add them together, if the answer is under 2 or over 2, you can work out uh, which one's closer. So I'm just going to add them together. So we've got 1.040, and so on. And then 0 0.960, 960, 960. If the answer is below 1, you can pick. That one, if the answer is above 1, you can pick that one. I think that's how it works. So we're going to get nothing, 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 carry 1, nothing. A uh, one. Nothing. Nothing carry one. Nothing. Nothing carry one. Yeah. So it's very close to being. But because it's infinite, you're going to get the remainder of one. Forty plus nine sixty is is one. So you're going to get these infinite carries of one all the way through. So because adding these together gets you a number a bit over. One. This one's a bit too big, so it must be that one. Yeah, I just had a bit of a brain fart there. Yeah, I liked adding them together, so thanks for that tip. Yeah. The diagram shows two overlapping rectangles, each measuring P by Q. The area of the overlap is exactly one quarter of the area of the total figure. What is the ratio of P to Q? So the area of this so the area of this shape is q squared I think that helps us Alright, I'm going to come back to this one. Can't see how to start it at the moment. So I'll come back to it. Two straight lines have equations y equals px and py equals qx minus 7, where p and q are constants. Two lines meet at the point 3, 1. What is the value of q? 
So you know that if they both meet the point three one, that when y is one, x is three. So take off for minus three equals three p. P equals minus one, and then the similar thing. We're going to substitute this into this one. So p y. So it's going to be again. It's going to be again. They meet at this point, so it's just going to be p, which is minus one, isn't it? Equals. Uh, when I come back to the question, Tim, I'll do that, I'm sure. Because I'm, I'm quite ill still, so I can feel myself sweating. I was going to turn my phone on mute. Someone's sort of work messaging me. Uh, okay, so minus 1 equals 3q minus 7. So it's going to be 6 equals 3q, it's going to be 2 equals q. That seems like a much easier question than the previous ones. The diagram shows two congruent equilateral triangles. The overlap is a hexagon. The areas of the smaller triangles, which are also equilateral, are 1, 1, 9, 9, 16, 16, as shown. Right, well, I think we had a similar one to this where we had to draw the equilateral triangles in. Last time we did one of these. What is the area of the inner hexagon? Okie dokie. So... Because they're equilateral, you know that one of the angles is 60. And because you know that the areas of the smaller triangles, which are also equilateral, are 1, 1, 9, 16, and 16. So you could work out, now this, this feels like a long way of doing it. You could work out the length of one of the sides of the large triangles, and the, the, the triangles are the, the it, they are congruent, but you, you know they're congruent anyway because they both have a one nine sixteen edge all the way around. And so you could work out the area of two of them. You could add them together. And then you could take off the excess bits to get this bit. Oh, that just feels a faff. Is there a better way of doing it? Need the area of one big one. Oh, I see what you mean, Tim. So basically, because yeah, so if you know the area, you can work out the length by rooting it effectively. So that would be one, three, and four. I mean, it won't be quite 3, will it? But it'll be 1x, 3x, and 4x. I think I'm 
bad day today. Yeah, I've got a really long way of doing it, I just don't like it. So, if the area of this is 16, I'm just going to do it my way. I'm, I'm sure there's a quicker way. There's two different people telling me what to do in chat, so. I'm just going to do the 16 one. So, 16 equals half times... A times B, but A and B are the same, so A squared times sine 60. So 32 One giant triangle will be 8x, yeah? Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes it so. Yeah. So basically, because of, um, yeah, that, I was wondering where to go from here. So the one giant triangle will be eight x, and whatever x might be to get you these areas, because the area scale factor is the regular scale factor squared you can get back to some number of x. Now it won't be 1, because they're not squares, it won't be 1x, 3x and 4x. If they were squares, it'd be 1, 3 and 4. But it'd be 1x, 3x and 4x, so x would be some fraction. But because the the the, the, the triangle has got an 8x edge, you can do some, some of the thing. The area of the whole triangle will be 64, including these bits. So it'll be 64, subtract... 16, subtract 9, subtract 1. That is a much easier way than what I was going to do. 10, 26, 48, 38, sorry. Can't do maths. Yeah, thanks, Tim. I'm going to give you credit for that one. Yeah. Oh, dear. I'm not with it today. What is the result when we simplify the expression? 1 plus x multiplied by 1 subtract 2 over x plus 1. Multiply by 1 plus 2 over x minus 1. So I'm not going to multiply these out until I've combined them as single fractions. And then I can multiply them as single fractions. And I can hope that some of the numerator will cancel with some of the denominator. So this first one will be x over x plus 1 over x, which is going to be x plus 1 over x. The second will be, and just, what I'm doing is changing 1 for x plus 1 over x plus 1. So this is going to be x plus 1, subtract 2, so x minus 1 over x plus 1. And then this last one, I'm going to swap this one for x minus 1 over x minus 1. You've got x minus 1 plus 2, it's going to be x plus 1 over x minus 1. And now we can cancel things out. There's a, we're going to multiply all these together. You've got an x minus 1 and an x minus 1, an x plus 1 and an x plus 1. So we've just got left this. In fact, these two would just cancel out. There'll be some sort of congruent. I'm not um, conjugates or some some sort of weird thing like that, but I think it's just this last one. But given I've got the last one as an answer, I'm going to go with that. Yeah, I've been in bed till 5 p.m. today. I'm not. I don't know what's wrong. I need to speak to the doctor. I think. But I don't think it's COVID, thankfully. The diagram shows a semicircle with centre O and radius 2 and a semicircular arc with diameter PR. Angle POR is a right angle. What is the area of the shaded region? Oh, so I'm, again, I'm just going to make the picture bigger. If I was 
ahead of the game I'd have done this already, but I'm not. So we've got um, this is a semicircle. So we're gonna work out. We're gonna work out the length of PR. Work out the yeah, area of half the circle that PR makes, and then we're gonna try and find this bit and subtract it off it. So there's a few steps to this. So if that's two, that's two. Just double check that is two, is it? Yeah. So PR PR squared is two squared plus two squared. So PR is the square root of eight or uh, two root two. So that's two root two. To work out the area of this section, we're going to work out the area of quarter of a circle and take off this triangle off it. So this section here, let's call that A, is going to be a quarter times pi r squared, pi times 2 squared, subtract this triangle, which is going to be 2 times 2 and a half it. Subtract a half of 2 times 2. So the area of that a bit is going to be a quarter times pi r squared is going to be pi. Subtract a half of 2 times 2 is just going to be subtract 2. So this a bit is pi subtract 2. And then this semicircle, the radius of the semicircle is going to be root 2 a half of 2 root 2. So the semicircle, which is going to, I'm going to call B, which includes A as well. So B is going to be a half of pi times R squared. So B is going to be a half of root 2 squared is 1. So B is going to be a pi. So B is a pi. To work out the area of the shaded bit, you're going to do B subtract A. B subtract A is going to be 2. I like that. I like it when you get questions of roots and pi's and everything, and then your final answer is a, a, a nice integer. Yeah. So B subtract A, you're going to have pi subtract pi, and then you're going to subtract a negative 2. Right. Sam writes on a whiteboard the positive inches from 1 to 6 inclusive at 1 to each. She writes them. She writes P additional 5 times and Q 7s. Oh, she writes P additional 5s and Q 7s on the board. The mean of all the numbers on the board is then 5.3. What's the smallest possible value of Q? Yeah, I liked it. I like the answer. I like the, and the nice, elegant answer. It's what make math, what make maths, what makes maths pretty. Hmm. So the mean of the numbers 1 to 6 is 3.5. 1 to 6 adds up to 21.
So I can do something that I don't like doing, and I'm going to try and avoid doing this. But I can look at the answers and try doing seven sevens and see if I can make 5.3 with the rest fives. And then I can try doing nine sevens, and then I can try and do 11 sevens and see if I can do that. I wonder if there's a better way of doing it. Yeah, Tim's got it, or oh, spotted it. So to get a mean of 5.3, you need to be dividing by some multiple of 10. So we've already got six numbers. So... So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then some other numbers. If there were 10 of them, they would need to add up to 53. Is With four numbers left, can we get this to 53 with just sevens and fives? So we're 29 short, four numbers, four sevens is 28. That doesn't work. So that's with 10 numbers. With 20 numbers, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six some fives and some sevens, and they have to add up to um, 20 numbers, they have to add up to 106. So can we get some fives and some sevens to add up to 106? I'm sure we can, there's just so much flexibility here. and. I'm going to cheat, I'm not very well today, so I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to assume that you can do it with seven sevens and see if that works. So seven sevens, that's now 13 numbers, which means you need seven fives. So that's 35, so 21, 35, 49, does that work? Uh, that's, no, that doesn't work. Is that the closest we can do? That's pretty close, isn't it? That's 214970, this is 105, so that doesn't work. Careful, minus the 1 to 6. What do you mean? I've already ta I'm taking the one to six off. Yeah, I'm I'm doing the twenty one. So twenty one is this. I'm always going to have twenty one. I mean, I should just take 21 off this at the start, but it's fine. I've got the 21 here. So I don't think I can do That's really close, isn't it? 7, 7, 49. If I add another 7 on, I have to take another 5 off, and I'm going to overshoot it by 2. So I don't think I can do it with 20 numbers. So I'll probably have to do it with 30. But I'm close. So with 30 numbers... We've got one through six again. We've got some fives and some sevens. Gets you uh, 159. You have to add three odd numbers. Do you? You don't. You can have two even numbers and that would work, wouldn't it? If you had an even number of... Oh, because all the... Multi, yeah, they've given you a clue. All Yeah, okay. They've said all the, all the, the numbers of sevens you can have are odd. So they've given you a bit of a clue just looking at the answers. So I don't think seven's going to work. I'm going to try nine. 
I don't like it, I'm just guessing here, but nine sevens, which means you've got six here, nine here, you've got 15 fives. When you say three odd numbers, this total could be even if you had an even number of fives. I mean, so you can't make 106 because all the numbers are seven. But like, imagine if eight, if eight was an answer or 10 was an answer, then you could have eight sevens, in which case you'd need six fives, and you'd be able to make an odd number, an even number still, wouldn't you? Oh, I see, yes, you mean, no, no, because, yeah, if they were two even numbers, yeah, okay, yeah, it's fine, ignore me, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the final answer's odd. Uh, not with it, it's 15 fives, it's 75. Nine sevens are 63. Uh, 138, so this works, so it's that one. Um, I will tell you now that is not a nice way of doing it, and I do what I normally don't do, and uh, I looked at what the answers would be and went with a few of those. But please don't do that. <laughs> Thomas has constant speeds for both running and walking. Yeah. Uh, Thomas has constant speeds for both running and walking. When a down escalator is moving, Thomas can run down it in 15 seconds or walk down it in 30. One day when an escalator was broken, it took Thomas 20 seconds to run down it. Yeah, that's much more elegant, AJ. So AJ... Yeah, that's much that's an algebraic way of doing it. Because say my mind's not with it today, but people have been asking for... What have I done? It disappeared for some reason. All right, okay. So Thomas has constant speed for running walking. When a down escalator is moving, Thomas can run down it in 15 seconds or walk down in 30. Hmm. <laughs> So I'm going to say, I'm going to say that the escalator is 60 meters long. I'm doing that because all of these go into 60. Now, it could be any distance you want. And this is probably, again, not the most elegant way of doing it. So When, and what I'm trying to do is to find out the speed of the escalator. So basically, on the day where it's stationary, it takes him 20 seconds to run down it. So his running speed, given our distance, is uh, 3 is meters per second. So when it's stationary, his running speed is three meters per second, uh, and his walking speed will be something else. So when it's moving, 
His running speed will still be three meters per second. However, the escalator will be adding something. The escalator will be adding uh, one meter per second itself because he can do it in a quarter of the time. So 60 divided by 15 is four meters per second. So moving his running speed is three meters per second plus one meter per second for the escalator. So his walking speed is something plus the one meter per second that the escalator provides him and he does it in 30 seconds. So his walking speed is one meter per second for him to do it in 30 seconds. So his walking speed is one meter per second when it's not moving means he will do it in 60 seconds, half as fast. And this one meter per second that we're getting from this is dependent on the, the distance of the escalator, I think. If we depict a different distance, it would have made a similar thing. I change this to imagine a guy on a track with a finish line is reducing a constant rate. Has you helped him visualize this? Yeah, there's probably an elegant way of doing it. So I'd like to see the mark scheme for some of this. Oh, thank you very much, Tim. That's the first one today that I think I've done better than you. Um, yeah, I picked six. I picked sixty because of the numbers in the question. Just, just. Um, I think if we if if one of them was X or something, I'd, I'd just be floundering here. Or rate his speed in terms of his whatever. All right, this is the last one I'm going to do, and then uh, Tim might just have to tell you how to do this one. Basically, the suggestion I had from the, the guys in the chat was to do that. Uh, so that, so this is Q, and this is P. If this is a quarter of the whole shape, then these two have to add up to three quarters, which means each of these is three eighths. Yeah, this is a much nicer way of doing it. So this is a quarter of the area of the whole shape. So these two must be three eighths each, and so. What's the ratio of P to Q? So you know that Q squared is a quarter and PQ, if the whole area of the thing was one, for example, then PQ is five eighths. Oh, yes, so the total shape is for Q squareds. Yeah, I think I would have run out of time. I think I've run out of time, to be honest. Yeah, I've run out of time, so I let Q equal a half. Oh, yeah, that's it. So. I just solve this, don't I? I just solve this. Q is a half. And if Q is a half, we substitute Q into here, so we can say 
Yeah, so I got to the point, this point, I could have done it from this, because I can solve this. I don't know what I was doing. Um, PQ is going to be uh, a half P is 5 eighths. So P is uh, 5 quarters. And this is 2 quarters. Uh, so Q is 2 quarters. What's the ratio between P to Q? It's 5 to 2. Yeah. Yeah, that's just that was a, that was a brain fart. Although that visualization helped me. So thanks Tim. All right, we're going to mark it. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I've not been well at all today and thanks to the two people who helped me along. Just remember if you're marking it, you get 5 points for the first 15. 6 for everyone thereafter, but you're going to lose marks based on which ones you get wrong thereafter. So what I'm going to do is I have some answers somewhere. I have Tim's answers. Um, and if I disagree with Tim, I will check AJ's answers. And then if AJ disagrees with both of us, he can yell at me. All right, so Tim said B. I agree with him. Tim said B. I disagree with that. So what have I done? Oh, I got this one wrong. I got A as well. So I'm going to go with AJ here. AJ and I both got A there, Tim. So we're going to go with that. Yeah. Uh, question three. AJ and I went C. Tim went E. So I'm just going to go with the majority here. Question four. We all said A. Question five. We all said D. Question six, we all said E. Question seven, we all said C. Yeah. Question eight, uh, we all said B. Question nine, we all said D. Question ten, I can't imagine this is wrong. Yeah, we all said D. Question eleven, uh, we all said E on a roll now. Question 12, we all said E again. Question 13, uh, AJ had already said he got this wrong, didn't he? Uh, Tim and I said A. Question 14, uh, AJ and I said B and Tim said D. 15, D, we all said, 16, uh, E and E, yeah, 17, I mean, I imagine these guys just correcting me when I differed from their answers as I went through from this point, so, uh, D and D, 18 is C and C, 19 is A and A, 20 is B and B, 21 is D and D, 22 is E and E, 23 is B and D, 24 is B and B, and 25 is E and E. So, according to the two fellows who have been helping me, uh, the answers that I've put on this are right according to the three of us. So we haven't got the exact mark schemes. Mm -hmm. I feel loath to give myself full marks here because I definitely got help, like significant help on at least two questions and then a couple of hints on others, but I've not been feeling very well. So um, we're going to say we got all the easy ones right. Uh, which gets us uh, 75. And I'm going to say that I had help on two questions I might not have done, so I'm only going to give myself the, um, I'm going to give myself eight lots of six. 48 gives me uh, 123 out of 135. Um, 
So that's what I got, I think, because uh, the other two guys helped me too much, I think, uh, throughout this today. So I'm not going to give myself full marks. That felt, I don't know about you two guys, that felt difficult for an intermediate one. That felt difficult. I had a couple of people commented on the YouTube videos that question four flew through a few people. Was it number this? Was it four? Was it this one? Yeah, that this threw a few people apparently. Um, on the YouTube videos. Maybe it's because I'm not awake enough. Um, some of them were quite easy. Like, there was a lot of numeracy, like, just, oops, like, that's numeracy, the first question is nearly always numeracy, there was the one where you could just times them together rather than do anything fancy, that was just numeracy. Yeah. Uh, and it feels like I didn't like the way I did that question. It feels like I cheated a bit there. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to call that a day. So thank you very much if you're watching YouTube. If you've done this, I have rushed this. I apologize. Normally I would have waited for elegant answers and stuff. So I think you're looking at three people who've had a good go at this. And collectively we think that the answers that we've just marked are correct. Um, but there's a caveat there. We haven't actually got the answers. Um, so other than that, thanks for watching. I will do the senior one for 2018 on Saturday um, live and that will be up on YouTube at a later date and then I will continue working backwards. I'll do 2017 and 2016 until I run out of uh, the ones I have access to. So anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, follow me on Twitch, do all the things that are free for you to do to help me out and I will see you soon.